everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is Madden 17 on EA Sports. The winding road to the Super Bowl continues here in the divisional round, where two teams look to take another step towards the Super Bowl. It's the Browns going up against the Broncos. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, we are a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building as we come to you from Sports Authority Field at Mile High here in downtown Denver. Coming up, it's Divisional Round Saturday, and we've got an AFC battle on tap between the Cleveland Browns and the Denver Broncos. Hello, everyone. As the postseason continues here on EA Sports, we're pleased to bring it to you. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And who has the edge here? You got one side that had some extra rest, but another comes in off a win last week in the wild card round. And it's funny, depending on which team you are, you say that that's an advantage. You'll take the rest. You'll take the week off. Get your guys healed up a little bit and ready to go. But that team that's coming in off of a win last week, they're really excited to keep playing. They feel like they are hot and ready to go. The first of four berths in the conference championships on the line here as divisional weekend of the NFL is underway. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And out will come the leader of this offense. And that, of course, is their signal caller. to about the 37. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Let's go. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Face mask. Charles, I know it's hard when live bullets are flying, but you cannot keep your hand up around the face mask area. It is absolutely inexcusable nowadays. We talk about target areas all the time. You have to aim lower so that your hand doesn't get involved in the face mask. Back to throw now on first down. And he's got his man on the out route. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll make it a second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Now a handoff here to his running back. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So it'll be first down here after the run. Here we go now. Three, nineteen. They'll set up a throw. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. A wise move there, looked like nobody open. Now second down. And now a peek at the starters on the defensive side. Second down following the incompletion. to throw and the hit jarred it loose it's incomplete 
Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. They'll look to throw here. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. A field goal try forthcoming now for the Broncos. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. And the 13-year man puts it through. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's 3 zip. So the opening drive for them here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball, put points on the board first, and let everyone start to celebrate. The Broncos kickoff unit out there to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And a look at a guy, definitely got a little razzle-dazzle to him. Can do it with his arm or his legs. Their mobile QB. Give it to him right up the gut. And he powers his way up past the 30. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he will find his man on the outside. 11 yards on the pickup, and it'll give the Browns a first down. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. Benefit, you got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Partner, nothing complicated here. This is just a pretty simple drag route. You're exactly right, Brandon. Instead of throwing it downfield, they just throw it underneath and let the receiver do the work. to throw here he's got time and that is incomplete and the big boys up front in the trenches what do you think of the o-line charles i love them because this is a group that's so cohesive they know what the man next to them is going to do at all times and they operate as a terrific unit third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. It's a four-yard pickup, and it's a second down. And here's a look at the defensive unit that hopes to halt this offense today. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four. Well, so many times we look at a short run, and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and 
establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. We heard them talk before the game about utilizing the intermediate passing game this week. It works for them there. They move the chains. And we saw them work on it in practice as well. And most teams take a period at a time to work on different things. They put a couple of periods of work into the intermediate passing game. And now we know exactly why. They got the look that they were seeking, and they were able to take advantage of it. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner, and the tackle was there right away for a loss of yardage. And the seemingly endless drive continues. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Man, there's no doubt the defense has to be excited after stacking up back-to-back -back running plays. But I still remember my old coaches saying, after you've had some success, you better be careful. They might have an answer for you. So make sure you watch your keys, play your techniques, and don't get overconfident. Offense working with a third and 13 still left. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Now they told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them. You gonna let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. And coming out now, the Broncos. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Though well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. He'll look to throw, finding time. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. The Broncos send out their punter now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Take it in at the 22. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. Now the Broncos heading back out onto the field. They got a little steam following the interception the last time they were out there, Charles. And they wanted to keep that going now because once you get one, he wanted to multiply and turn into a bunch more. And right now, they're putting up their version of a no-fly zone. No-fly zone. I like that. We, we had a flyover before the game. Yeah, but, but this time, they would intercept it. <laughs> Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. 
And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. He'll drop to throw. He's going to fire one deep middle. That's caught inside the 20. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. And now the offense operates in the red zone. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. A group of Broncos there combined to bring him down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. They're going to look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, Tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball of their hands fast in this position and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Can't find anyone open. This will be caught just inside the 10. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they've got it first and goal. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They come out here in the eye. Now a handoff here to his running back. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. The NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Head and Shoulders. Shoulders were made for greatness, not dandruff. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. So now the Browns will turn it over to their field goal unit here. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend, but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. 
Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. No gain on the play there. Second down. 3-4 defense, usually here you'll see the linebackers come up make those plays, but the nose tackle, also vital. That was so vital because what you just pointed out, normally he eats up blockers that allows the linebackers to get to the ball carrier. In this case, he did his job and then some, and there was no gain at all for the runner. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. No, that wasn't an explosive run. That wasn't one that took it all the way to the house. But boy, for a team that's had trouble running it the entire game, that's the kind of run they need, hopefully, to get themselves kick-started. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. Third down is a down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win. And the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact, that's how you end up winning it. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post, that's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer. He just dropped the pass. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Man, it wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? So now at third and 12 with an extra defender here in the secondary, a nickel look. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic. So anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even added a little extra at the end with a short run. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down, and he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. Let's go, Brad, 38! And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things, and they've not let him run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. They'll drop to throw, surveying the field. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. And nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, Deppel was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. 
Those darn quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back, Mr. Oh, did, Davis. Did, did that come out? It did. Okay. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. Back-to-back -back runs that were stacked up. Offensively, now you've got to think to yourself, do we change blocking assignments? Do we change formations? Do we change looks in order to try and get the running game going? And they'll add a DB in the secondary here on third and 14. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. He's got time in the pocket. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme. So he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. So the offense has it first and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's got time. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. It's a loss of a yard, so they'll wind up crediting him with a sack, and it brings up third down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> And the offense now will try to regroup after the sack on second down. Three down, three down. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Out of the gun now on third down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Okay, when the big guy runs a corner route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covering him, doesn't matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back. Yeah. He usually has the advantage because of his body type. And here comes play number six on this drive. And on the ground they go with a running back. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL, and a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, 
they were safeties. They moved him up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. They're going to look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Here we go now. Blue landing. Blue landing. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet. He's going to have the first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Fresh set of downs here. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now, he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. They'll go to the air here on third and two, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable, usually an excellent target, and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. And his kick is indeed good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. <laughs> And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here comes the defensive unit for the Broncos. They trot back out there. They're hoping to do what they did last time, force another punt. Last time it resulted in a field goal. We'll see if they can get another stop here, though. And the best defenses are in the business of preventing points and creating points. And that's exactly what these guys did on their last possession. Why? Because they got off the field on three and out, turned the ball over to their offense after the punt, and let them roll downfield and put the ball through the post for a field goal. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field, it's popped up in the air. I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense, because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. There's a complete to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And they'll run it here. 
And a nifty little deke juke spin move. Not a great deal there on the back end, but a nice gain still. Playing against a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front, and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. He'll look to throw to the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. And here comes play number six on this drive. They come out here in the eye. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back with more AFC playoff action after this timeout. A reminder, as we did all through the regular season, we'll check in with Larry Ridley at halftime. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. Here we go. Looking to throw. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's go. only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And that is incomplete. A good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that will tie things up at 6-6. Six, six. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Broncos' offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They were happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drop in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, 
you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Back to throw here. Finding time. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. A gain of six there on first. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. And movement by one of the Broncos up front, and in comes the flag. And ready now for second and nine. Again, he'll drop to throw. And a hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. And they take the lead here as it's now 9-6. to six. So they kick it through to take the lead. There is a little bit of time left, though, here in the second quarter. And while they're concerned about not giving up a big return or giving up points themselves going into the half, how good do they feel, though, putting points on the board themselves right near the end of the first half? And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Come on, let's go! Try on They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's going to loft one deep. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. A big play there as the first half is winding down. And once again, the Browns are back in front. So they're able to capture the lead here just before halftime. And not only that, they get the ball to start the second yeah, half. That's right. This is almost like basketball down the stretch, right, where you get the two-for-one situation where you try and get two shots to your opponent's one. In this situation, they got the touchdown. They'll get another shot at to start the second half. Could be a big turnaround. And he bangs this one through to make it a 13-9 game now. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. 
That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. So it's on to halftime of this AFC Divisional Round matchup as we send you on down to our studios in Orlando where standing by is Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Here in the playoffs, you hope to have close games where both sides are putting it all on the line. And that's what we have so far. It should be a very exciting second half. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. with the ball end of the first the catch will be made deep down the field and that connection will lead to a gain of 39 yards now first and 10 the pass complete out of the gun he goes Browns go up by four so that's gonna do it for us we'll send you back now.